Uh, so tonight's video, I'm going to do one more around the sawmill than anything. Um, one, because I was kind of running out of ideas for like carpentry based stuff. And then number two is I'll probably like post a fair bit more about this, go like going, working into the future. Um, <clears throat> and then so yeah, kind of before I start going into like what's happening next, I might as well catch you up. Um, so the first video you saw was like the first ever time I was using an Alaskan sawmill, um, which was kind of my introduction to sawmilling. Um, I got them in because I wanted to sell them like through the tool company. So I went and got picked up the sawmill to like sell. Um, and then because I wanted to make that video, the first one that you watched at the start of this, I went up like the logging dumps at Powtown there and picked up a few logs and brought them home, milled them up and made the video. And that was about it. I didn't really think about it. Um, and then probably they sat my shed for fucking ages. And then I was cleaning up one day and I fucking moved them around about four or five times just trying to find room for them. It's like, fuck, I'll just put them up on Facebook Marketplace and sell them. Um, so in one of the pictures there you saw like... I'll yeah, uh, I'll put the ads in um, that I was using. They were pretty basic, like I just mark it up in um, photos on my phone and post them up. Um, and I wasn't expecting to really sell them. They were like 50, 60. I think the most expensive on the first one might have been like 70 bucks. Um, and they went fucking wild. People were screaming for them. Um, so I started charging delivery for it as well. So. I'd do a delivery on the condition it could be done at 6 in the morning. Um, that was how I worked it with like framing. Um, and at the time like the tool company wasn't massive so I could still do that a couple hours a day and everything was all good. So it turned into this great side hustle of like each Sunday Arvo would go out cut some slabs somewhere. Um, not massive ones, they were like tiny sort of like 400, 500 in diameter. Um, most of the time they'd been just dead on the ground um dry as shit so they were just good to go um so yeah I did that and then a mate up at King Lake had a heap of trees come down in Black Saturday and they were just sitting on his block so I was telling him about what I was doing he's like oh you should come up mate they're like big slab um and they were they were sort of 900 by 4 metres um and I would have spent we had a week where we were quiet on, quiet on framing um, so I spent, yeah, pretty much all of that week up there cutting slabs and it was great, um, cause the timber was like, fuck, 10 years old then, I reckon, um, maybe even older, 12 years maybe, um, it pretty much cut, storm, it was summerish, so I storm for a couple of months, um, and they were pretty good to go, so I ended up making like, pretty good money on them reasonably fast as well um so yeah from there it kind of just grew one of my mates was pretty keen on getting involved in it um so we did a yeah a couple of backyard jobs like sort of mill on site stuff um and then yeah just keep trying to sell slabs and we got to a point where like <laughs> chainsaws milling's good it gets you going but it's fucking hard work um and it got to a point where like I kind of wasn't enjoying it as much as I once was. Um, like everything else had picked up. So the money wasn't as important to me as it once was. Um, so yeah, we kind of decided that that was the right time to buy and like a proper mill. Um, so we went and had a look and because we were doing slabs mostly at the time, we went and got a um, Norwood HD 36, I think's the model of the mill we got. Um, so I drove to Sydney I left Melbourne at like 6 in the Arvo um, and I got to Sydney at about 7 o'clock the next morning. I just like power napped my way all the way there. Um, fucked around in Sydney for the day, picked up the sawmill, got like a quick how-to lesson from the guys that we boarded off up in Gosford there um, and then drove back home down Melbourne. Uh, and then, yeah, from there, it was kind of just like each weekend, go and cut some slabs down the yard. Um, and then just try and, like, yeah, cut enough that we could store them, dry them out. So for the first, like, 
probably eight months, a year. Um, it was just like cut slabs. We didn't really sell any. Um, so yeah, we were waiting for them to dry out. Um, and eventually, yeah, we started to, you know, not massive amounts, but we'd move a few slabs a week. Um, that probably went on for about a year or so. Um, and then it was probably started this year. We really kind of started to ramp it up. We got a job. Um, I'll put up a photo of it. It was a cladding job. Um, so we did radial saw and weather boards and just like 140 by 20 um, boards as well that got put up as weather boards. Um, so we ended up contracting that out as in the cutting of it to a fellow with a Lucas mill. Um, and then, yeah, from there it kind of just went a bit nuts. So we started um, like advertising that we did kind of dimensional lumber. Um, and then we had like, uh, I think it was Ravenhall called us first, um, wanting like a semi-low defense post, which would be about, fuck, I think it was 18, 16, 18 packs, something like that, um, of Australian fence posts. So we ended up, and this was just after the June storm, so there was a heap of trees on the ground and that kind of stuff. And we found a farmer up at Tulangi that had like, one of his paddocks had been kind of decimated by it. Um, so we went up there with like a team of arborists and excavator operators and fucking log trucks and shit like that and trucked them all back down to the yard at Clyde there. Um, and that's what gave us the timber to start contracting everything out and getting it all cut. Um, and then yeah, from there, kind of just kept going with the dimensional stuff kept going with the slabs um and then that's kind of about the point we're at now so you're nearly all caught up um the only other thing i'd say is we've just bought our own lucas mill so we won't keep contracting stuff out we'll have our own employees down there working um and then yeah so it's kind of a strange video like i said i needed a video to make and this came to mind um and then, yeah, second to that is, like, obviously I'll make some more videos once the Lucas Mill gets here as well, because it'll probably be, make for interesting watching. Um, and then, yeah, yeah. hopefully you've enjoyed it. <laughs>